Hello and welcome to the episode 335 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. As it happened in the previous 11 episodes, starting a month, we'll open this December detailing the events happened today and at an unspecified date during the month. In particular, some of the highlights of this episode include Brian Epstein starting his quest to get the Beatles signed, Ringo admitted to a hospital and Paul getting his way in 1968. On the 1st of December 1960, Pete Best and Paul McCartney landed in London after being deported from West Germany the previous evening. They took a train with whatever money they had left and returned home to Liverpool. In early December 1960, John Lennon and Stu Sutcliffe, the only two Beatles remained in Hamburg, decided to negotiate on their own a one-month contract with Peter Eckhorn, owner of the Top Ten Club. The engagement, if the deported Beatles could get a work permit from the West Germany authorities, was to start in April 1961. Alan Williams, who had served as the manager of the band, despite no contract ever being signed, was kept in the dark about the negotiations. This was the first indication that his relationship with the band was going to end soon. On the 1st of December 1961, the Beatles, now featuring Pete Best on drums, George Harrison and John Lennon on guitar, and Paul McCartney on bass, had a double feature around Liverpool. First, they performed their 68th two-hour lunchtime concert at the Cavern Club, in the city. In the evening, they moved to the nearby Wallasey for their third show at the Tower Barham for a third Big Beach session an event featuring six top beat groups from Liverpool. This particular session lasted five and a half hours and was attended by 2,000 people overall. In early December 1961, Brian Epstein started working for the Beatles as their new de facto manager. His first idea to increase the popularity of the band was to write to the popular music columnist at the Liverpool Echo newspaper, only known as Disker, inquiring about the possibility of a favourable mention of the band in his off-the-record column. The reply arrived from London. Disker was the nom de plume of a Decca Records sleeve note writer, Tony Barrow. Barrow, being Liverpoolian by birth, also doubled as freelancer journalist for The Echo. Given the neutral tone of the answer and the possibility of interesting someone actually working at a big record label, Brian decided to travel to London to meet Tony Barrow. At the meeting, Epstein played an acetate of a performance of the Beatles at the Cavern Club. Barrow appeared nonplussed by the recording, he told Epstein that he wouldn't mention the Beatles in his off-the-records column for the simple reason that the band had no record out, nor a recording contract. After Epstein returned to Liverpool, though, Barrow contacted the artist and repertoire department at Decca, explaining that a big customer would have liked Decca to check out a band he was managing and that he would have been tactful to send someone to attend one of their performances in Liverpool. The head of A&R agreed, and his young assistant was sent to the Cavern Club. See episode 347 for more information. Epstein also tried his luck with EMI, sending the single the Beatles had recorded with Tony Sheridan to the A&R departments of two of the label's subsidiaries. Columbia and HMV. Both refused to have anything to do with a backing band of a singer that already had a recording contract with a competing label. Later in the month, before the end of 1961, Peter Eckhorn visited Liverpool with Tony Sheridan to sign bands for the summer 1962 season. He naturally met the Beatles, but he couldn't agree on a suitable payment with Brian Epstein. 
Epstein wanted 500 Deutsche Marks per man per week, 44 pounds 50 then, about 960 pound in 2020 money. While Eckern was willing to offer only 450 Deutsche Marks, 40 pounds then, about 850 pounds in 2020 money. In the end, Eckhorn left the country on the 30th of December, having secured all the bands. On the 1st of December 1962, the Beatles, now in their definitive lineup with Ringo Starr on drums, had two engagements in the same night. A first concert took place at the Victory Memorial Hall in Northwich. The second engagement was almost an hour away at the Tower Barroom in Walsey, to play a very late night spot at a Venus evening dance event. This second engagement was arranged only the day before, to boost ticket sales for the event, another sign that the Beatles had really made it in the Liverpool area. During the month of December 1962, at an unknown date, the Beatles won the end-of-the-year popularity poll by Mercy Beat, for the second consecutive time. In addition, they appeared fifth and seventh, respectively, on the Best British Vocal Group and the Best British Small Group polls by New Musical Express. The enemies were, naturally, national polls, whereas the Mercy Beat included just local bands. On the 1st of December 1963, the Beatles' autumn tour stopped at the De Montfort Hall in Leicester. Exactly one year later, in 1964, Ringo Starr was admitted at a University College Hospital in London. His stay would last for 10 days, and it was needed to have his tonsils removed. Needless to say, three years later, in 1967, the editing of the Magical Mystery Tour film went on at Norman's Film Productions. And needless to say, there is a lot you can do to support this podcast. If all my work so far has been of any interest to you, if you found these ventures into the Beatles' history interesting and informative, you really should show me some love. Donations of any amount are naturally well accepted, but you could be even more useful if you share this podcast on your social media, perhaps with fellow Beatles lovers. Share the love and allow other people to discover my work. That will be more than enough of a thank you for me. For details on this and more, please visit www.simonmas.com support. As usual, the link is in the description. Thank you! During the month of December 1968, after the personal difficulties emerged during the recording of the band's last album and after the idea of actually playing some of that material live had been quietly rejected see episode 305 for more information, Paul McCartney tried to push forward with his idea of returning to play live with a new project. Paul was sure that such a move would have eased the tensions within the band, but a return to live touring or even a few dates in front of a live audience was simply impossible. The proposal that managed to get everyone's approval, although it was far from being an enthusiastic approval, was to have a one-hour live show somewhere recording eight new songs in front of a live audience. It was a bit like what the band had done for the Hey Jude and Revolution promo clips, see episode 247 for that. Everyone agreed that the filming of those clips had proved to be an enjoyable experience, and so, Paul inferred, then the Beatles could very well expect the same feeling for a similar project. Once the idea was agreed upon, the producer of the project, Dennis O'Dell, suggested that while the four were deciding on the actual venue for the performance, they could start rehearsing the material, so that a half-hour featurette of the band at work could be shot. They could use the Twickenham Film Studios, where the filming of The Magic Christian would start on the 3rd of February. 
As we saw in the January episodes of What A Fab Day, starting from episode 2, things did not go well. On the 1st of December 1969, instead, the BBC filmed a documentary in various locations around London about Ringo Starr. The aim was the promotion of The Magic Christian, the film in which Ringo starred as support to Peter Sellers, about to be released. The documentary was broadcast on the 10th of December as an entire show of line-up, between 11.07 and 11.30 pm. Ringo was accompanied and interviewed by Tony Bilbo, going from Apple headquarters in Savile Row into his car, driving through London and chatting about a number of subjects. The action, then, moved to a boat on the River Thames, with Ringo rowing and talking. The shooting ended at around 4 pm. During this same evening, George Harrison saw the American duo Delaney and Bonnie perform live at the Royal Albert Hall. George liked their music so much that only a business complication prevented him to sign them for Apple for the release of their Accept No Substitute album. After the gig, Harrison spoke with Eric Clapton, who was playing in the band supporting the duo. Clapton convinced George to join the band and tour a bit with them. Finally, during the 1969 Christmas holiday, Paul McCartney started working on his first solo album, experimenting at home with a four-track studio recorder. Using only one microphone, he recorded the lovely Linda, that would be something, Valentine's Day, Mama Miss America, Rock and Roll Springtime, Glasses and other songs. As we've seen in episode 32 and in other February episodes, Paul ended up giving the finishing touches to the album at the Morgan Studios and at the EMI Studios, working incognito to avoid anyone to know he was planning a release. Before closing this lengthy episode, allow me to remind you that visiting www.simonmas.com support, you will also discover how you can acquire the deluxe version of the podcast, with hours of extra content. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas Music you love